Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. This story is inspired by recent events that happened in Prince Edward Island this past week. Bennett has heard that they are having a visitor, and when the power goes out, he doesn't quite understand what that means. They have a generator. No Wi-Fi? is one of the things that he struggles with. And then finding something to do that doesn't require power takes him some time. Fiona comes for a visit. It was time to go outside and wait for the school bus. Bennett was a little bit late this morning, and he could hear his friends outside calling his name. His driveway was where the school bus stopped to pick up all the kids in the neighborhood. Usually he was the first one outside, but today his mom made scrambled eggs, and it always took longer to eat that. Scrambled eggs were so yucky spongy. Bennett asked his mom seven times if he could have his weekend treat of Fruity Loops. The number seven was always his lucky number. So whenever he wanted something, he would ask seven times. And it usually worked. Not today, because Mom said he needed to eat eggs to help him grow. He was just getting his sneakers on when his mother handed him his jacket to put on. Mom, I don't have time and it's not cool to wear a jacket. It's not even cold out, and no one else is wearing one, he complained. You have time, Benny. Here, let me help you, his mother said, holding out the sleeves so he could put his arms inside. It's supposed to start raining later today, and your jacket will help keep you comfy. Okay, okay, but I gotta go, Mom, Bennett said as he ran out the door. Bennett his mom called. You forgot your backpack. He ran back, grabbed his backpack, and ran to wait with his friends at the end of the driveway. He hadn't been waiting long when the special school bus quietly pulled up to take them all to school. Their school bus was electric and made a funny sound. When the lights began flashing, the kids looked both ways and then walked towards the door of the bus. The bus driver, Mrs. Doucette, who also sometimes taught Bennett social studies, greeted all the kids with a smile. Bennett sat beside his best friend, Rupashi, who lived down the street from him. Her mom made her eat eggs in the morning, too. Hi, Benny. Hi, Roop. Did you hear the latest news, she asked. Don't tell me any spoilers about the new Marvel show. My mom says it might be inappropriate, so I haven't watched it yet. I might ask her seven times tomorrow night to see if she will let me watch it. Oh, it's not about that. I haven't watched it yet either. But I did watch the movie with the Superdog last night. Your mother let you watch a movie on a school night? So lucky. So, what's the news you wanted to tell me? My mother told me this morning that someone is coming to visit our little town. Oh? Who? Fiona. Fiona? Thinking for a moment, Bennett continued. Oh, yeah, I know about that. There is a storm coming. I saw it on the news last night, but it's coming on the weekend, so we don't miss school. Not fair. Storms always come on the weekend, Rupashi said. I think we only had one snow day last year. My parents were preparing last night. My father says it's going to be super windy, said Bennett. Yep, it certainly is. After school, Bennett went outside to the school pickup zone. His father had called the school to let them know that he was going to pick him up 
and wouldn't be taking the bus. Climbing up into his truck, Bennett asked, Why are you picking me up today? Don't you have to work? I finished early and I went to the store to get some more food and thought I would stop by and pick you up, his father said. And you need my help carrying stuff into the house, right? You got it. You can carry in the extra groceries I bought while I carry in some of the heavy stuff. Are the groceries for our visitor that's coming? Bennett asked. Visitor? What visitor are you talking about, bud? His father asked. Rupashi said that Fiona was coming to visit us tomorrow. Laughing, his father said, Right. Yes, we have a big storm coming, and they give these storms a name. It's going to start tonight while you are in bed sleeping. And with the way you sleep, you might not even know she has come. I think I will stay up super late so that I know she has come, Bennett said. Your mother might not agree with that, bud, his father said. Even if I ask her seven times? Even if you ask her seven times. Can I stay up a bit later, Mom? No, Bennett. We already stayed up a bit later than normal, and you need your sleep. And so do I, his mother said, yawning. This is a big storm, right? Yes, it's a big storm. But you will be warm, cozy, dry and safe in your bed. And Daddy will be up a few times through the night to check on you. Tomorrow we are going to have all kinds of fun playing games and eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and other fun foods. So you have nothing to worry about. Do we have chips, Mama? Daddy went and got storm chips. I think he got some pop. Wow, this feels a bit like Christmas, Mama. His mother laughed. I'm glad you feel that way. We will have some fun tomorrow, but you have to get a good sleep first. I'll turn on your nightlight and I've downloaded some stories for you to listen to while you go to sleep. Night night, Mommy. Night night, little man. Love you. Love you too. The next morning, Bennett jumped out of bed and said, Hey, computer, has Fiona come? No response. Then he noticed that all the lights were out in his room and that the wind was super noisy outside. It sounded like it was raining super hard, too. He walked to the kitchen and saw his mother and father sitting at the table drinking coffee. Bennett had tasted his father's coffee once and almost spit it out. It was so yucky. Good morning, he said. What's for breakfast? Morning, bud. How about Fruity Loop cereal and some milk, his father said. That sounds awesome. How come the lights are not on, Mama, and my computer isn't working either? The power is out, little man, so all that stuff isn't working, his mother said. I thought we had a generator. We do, his father replied, but that just keeps some of our appliances working and the lights on here in the kitchen. But we still have Wi-Fi, right? No, Bennett, there is no Wi-Fi, chuckled his mom. No Wi-Fi? No Wi-Fi? But you said this was going to be a fun day and that we were going to play games. There are lots of games we can play without Wi-Fi, little man. I feel bored already, Bennett said as he started eating his cereal. After breakfast, Bennett, not knowing what to do, started pacing the floor. Back and forth, back and forth he walked. He was expecting to play some video games, watch his favorite YouTube videos about Minecraft, and maybe use his mother's phone. But now he had to make his own fun, whatever that means. He walked to his room and looked around. He couldn't go outside because the wind was way too strong, and his dad said that he might get blown away. Bennett thought for a second that if he got blown far enough, he might be able to land in Rupashi's backyard. 
But if he missed, he might land on her roof, and that wouldn't be safe. I could read a book, or maybe draw some pictures, or maybe build a spaceship with Lego, he thought. I have some puzzles I could make. Bennett had so many choices, he just didn't know what to do. So he paced some more. Bennett walked out into the kitchen where his mother and father were still sitting, drinking even more coffee. How much of that yucky stuff can they drink anyway, he thought. Standing in front of them, he said, I'm bored. I'm bored, bored, bored. I'm sure you could find something to do, little man, his mother said. Can I watch TV? Sorry, bud, there is no power for the TV, his father said. Still no YouTube, he asked. Still no YouTube, his mother replied. Did you find a book to read? She asked. I couldn't decide what book to read, Bennett said. How about getting out your sketchbook or coloring book and creating some art? My imagination is so big, I can't decide what to create. What about your Legos or puzzles, his father asked. I'm just not in the mood, Bennett replied. It's a boring day. Boring, boring, boring. I have an idea, his mother said. Why don't I get some storm chips and we can play a board game? We are often so busy, we seldom have time for the three of us to play a game together anymore. It will be fun. Bennett liked the idea of having some potato chips. Mom? Yes, little man. Can I have a small glass of soda, too? Sure. I think we can have some treats today. Yes, Bennett said. After playing board games together for a few hours, finishing a couple bags of chips while they were playing, Bennett said, I feel kind of sad. Why would you feel sad? Weren't you just having a lot of fun, his mother said? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and sour cream and onion chips are my favorite, but I won so many of the games and you guys lost. Maybe we should play some more so that I can let you guys win. Bennett's father laughed. It's okay, bud. You are just too good at these board games. I don't think we would stand a chance, no matter how much longer we played. Besides, it's not whether we win or lose. We just love playing the game. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing board games, but I think I will take a break now and read a book in my room for a while. That sounds great, bud. I'm going to check outside now that the wind has stopped, his father said. Maybe you can give us another chance to win later after dinner. How does that sound? Sounds good. That night when he was getting tucked into bed, Bennett asked his mother, Mom, can we play more board games together? I had a lot of fun playing today. You didn't miss YouTube, video games, or playing on my phone? I like those, but I think playing games with you guys and reading breaks are more fun. I'm glad to hear that, little man. We'll make sure we find more time to play games together from now on, okay? Okay. Are you ready for sleep? Yes, I think so, Bennett said with a great big yawn. Love you. Love you too, little man. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.